Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to the Tavern. What's going on? What's going on? NFL started this week. There was uh, nothing good happened this weekend in the NFL, right? <laughs> Those script writers uh, did an unbelievable job this week. And I'm saying that as a I mean, Giants fan. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, we had a discount double check. Rogers. Someone needs to talk to their insurance agent after that. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, wow, that was cute. Um, Like, crazy start to the NFL season. Like, Right. Like, unbelievable start. Like, like uh, it's – you have – Your Colts you up have, there in Indy. My, my Jacks took care of your Colts in Indy this weekend. They didn't take uh, care of them. They did not take care of them. They almost lost no, them, let's be honest. Um. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Brad. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, Brad. A... Sorry about your Bears. That was the only thing worse than that loss was my Giants to the Dallas Cowboys. Like, that, that was, was pretty a... embarrassing because it was that the Cowboys. Was... Because no, that gave that... every Cowboy fan hope that they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, now that I mean, let's be real about it. <laughs> they better play like that every week. Now, that defense <laughs> looked legit. Right, but the Giants also looked terrible. So I mean, yeah, I'd like to thank um, between my quarterback who got me three points and Saquon, who yeah no, I mean I yeah I got thanks Greg I, I you uh, gift wrapped you one this week and and you, 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 you stole all of like my picks which right. uh, then helped me and then to I destroy got you in fantasy. yeah I would have beaten everybody else in our fantasy league this week except for you and who <laughs> did I play this week you Dan yep. Uh, hey, did you see – it came late this afternoon. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. Um, the PGA Tour, this whole live PIF PGA Tour uh, congressional hearing, there's another one tomorrow where no one from the PGA Tour, live or PIF will be at the meeting. But Richard Blumenthal is saying that Yasser is going to have to show up for one of these meetings with Congress. How's he going to hold him accountable? He's not even a U.S. citizen. Yeah, like, that's the <laughs> – if you're here's the thing he does gonna, he's gonna have to follow business laws of the united states doing business in the united states like that's right. where he's gonna hold him accountable for for that if you're running a business here you still have to follow the the laws of that country same thing when u.s right. businesses do businesses in other countries right. so like that's where they're going to be able to hold him accountable uh but this is not that yet like no, this is congressional hearing to hear about like you're just trying to meddle in things because you need to meddle in things where where it is and it's it's understandable i get it i, I mean I, I want our politicians to do things i don't want them to fight and complain all the time which is what they're doing now so right um but i mean we'll see what happens it's and and if you're not going to have the pga there and stuff like that there's enough other stuff in the pga the european Ryder cup team just just showed up in italy today no, they've been there. They were there all weekend. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They, they're already there. No, well, no, they were all there for a scouting trip. Uh, the U.S. team was there too. They've flown home um, because a couple of the guys are playing. I know uh, Justin's playing this week. Home is um, playing this week as the defending champ. Yeah, so they they went out on a scouting mission uh, early, and uh, they all flew over and uh, had a good little trip, I guess. Uh, Jordan didn't go because his wife is due like any day now. So he didn't go to Italy with them. And then um, Xander and uh, Patrick Kenley didn't go either. Uh, so nine guys from the U.S. went on the trip. Well, and you and I talked this earlier today, like why Tiger is not going to be one of the captains uh, of the team or is because he just can't travel that far right now and that much uh, on his leg. So all these people that are talking about, oh, I saw Tiger swing a golf club. There's yeah, a lot more. There's a lot more. Well, to it so, than that. Not... yeah. Did you see the video? I don't know if you saw the video today of Tiger hitting balls. Um, Tiger is hitting a bunch of wedges and making fun of Ricky. And that's what they did on the driving range at Liberty National. It's actually pretty funny to watch. Um, and then Tiger was messing around with Ricky's putter. So um, it was a uh... Duff. Uh, we never need to talk about this. Uh, even when the Cowboys are bad, uh, I have no room to talk because they like basically dismantled my giants uh like that was ugly to watch uh but 
they are uh, i will not say how about them cowboys or america's team because you can't give yourself a nickname <laughs> no you can't um hey i know we want to get into the odds and i want to do the odds with dave but dave is out at a wine walk right now um and can't join us to talk odds or any predictions um and i know that usually you want to mix up the order tonight we go to daniel early because he's sitting here waiting and uh, we could go to him yeah. early. Uh, yeah, you want to do that? I think we I think we go into happy hour and uh, yeah, we, got a, we got a we got a lot to talk about tonight. So I mean, yeah, we'll, there's not a lot like the Fortnite is. If we scratch he said the Fortnite, he said I Fortnite. Know. It sounds like my kids. <laughs> well, it's the championship that's coming up this week. So it, yeah, there's an extra eye in there, but yeah, it's not Fortnite. Oh, yeah. but it's close. I, <laughs> um, I mean, there's but... an Arjun Atwal. There's an Arjun Atwal sighting in the field this week. So I mean, it's it's definitely a stacked field. Yeah, we're not we're not doing picks. It's a. I mean, you got, I think two players, um. Well, no, maybe like five players that are in the top fifty in this. So you have a decent field. Yeah. But yeah, we'll talk that when Dave gets back on the phone and we on the on the line here. Um. But yeah, Brad is Brad is saying that we need to go to happy hour. Um. And I'm I'm all for that because I know the guy that we're bringing in and he's a good friend of mine. And uh, excited. And he's a great, I'll be honest, there, if you ever need a great partner to play in a tournament with, this guy might be the guy to be the partner. Like, he is one of the best partners I've ever played with in a tournament. So let's go to happy hour and bring Daniel in. So without further ado, I want to introduce Daniel Fitzpatrick from Flight Scope. Daniel, what's going on, buddy? Hey guys, hey, thanks for having me. It's quite the oh, Thanks for being here tonight. Appreciate yeah, it. thanks for joining us. Are you, uh, yeah. I'm going to ask, are you, are you down south of me right now? I know you moved recently. So are you down south or are you, and where are you at right now? Yeah, so left Orlando in June. Now we live uh, down in Key West. So living the island life. Nice. 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 Yeah. Nice. Still going to see you. the office, you know, every six to seven weeks or so to, check in with everybody and then also do some demo trips along the way. So nice. Well, next time you're up here, let's, uh, let's try and definitely, well, we'll start with, let's try and peg it up. You and I, let's get out there and tee it up. Um, yeah, right definitely. definitely. Um, but we're, we can talk about you and I playing golf all we want, but we're here to talk about flight scope and that logo on your jacket tonight. So, um, Greg, why don't you start us off here? So, well, Daniel, thank you first of all for joining us tonight, uh, here in the tavern. Um, but let's start off with tell us a little bit uh, about Flight Scope, uh, where it began, and where it is uh, today. Yeah, definitely. So um, our owner, CEO, founder um, is uh, his name's Henry Johnson. He uh, he works in our Orlando headquarter office. Um, he developed this product when he was uh, basically serving his mandatory military time, um, and and basically was using radar to track uh, projectiles, missiles, things like that and uh, decided he wanted to kind of take this into uh, something he could use for sports to collect data in. And, and so kind of started with cricket and tennis and then eventually came golf. So 1989, he, uh, he basically started the company Flightscope. And uh, basically, I think 2000 uh, was when they tracked the first golf ball um, with a Doppler radar. Um, and then shortly after that, it started going into golf simulators and then it became portable teaching products, which we have today, um, which obviously are made easy with everybody having a, a smartphone or, you know, a tablet with them with, you know, everything in their normal lives anymore. It's, it's been a very useful tool, um, not just for golf, but for, for other sports as well. We do baseball, softball, uh, they have different products for each of those. So it definitely gives us uh, a well-rounded, um, you know, approach to the athletics not not just golf specific, even though that's kind of where our roots really really are in sports. Nice, nice. Well, and let's talk about your background, Daniel. Um, and and what's your background, and how did you get to Flight Scope um, and, and today, and where you are today? Sure. Yeah. So I actually grew up in Iowa, um, small town, about three hundred people, so nobody's ever heard of before. And um, I moved to Florida in 2011. Uh, I just got tired of only being able to play golf six months a year and, and wanted to kind of pursue a trade school for golf management. So I went and did that and then kind of bounced around from golf courses around central Florida. Um, that's kind of where I met Steve. Uh, was, uh, you know, I was running a lot of golf tournaments at Celebration Golf Club and uh, he was an active player in those events and sometimes sponsors as well. And, um, 
from there, uh, some of the guys I went to college with were already working at FlightScope and kind of brought me in. Uh, and that was five years ago next week. Um, nice. So since then, I've been uh, doing sales with FlightScope and traveling all over and, um, you know, getting to hang out with some tour players from time to time. So it definitely has had its perks. Uh, but it's, it's nice to, it's, it's pretty rare to be in the golf industry and get that nine to five job. So I, I definitely, that's appreciative for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry you had to put up with Steve for all that. Uh, <laughs> well, it's funny you no. mentioned Iowa. Dave, who's not on here is literally in Iowa where he lives now and moved from Florida. He went the opposite route of you. Um, from, uh, actually at one point used to live about five minutes from you at Celebration Golf Club. Literally oh, in wow. celebration. With, well, Dave, yeah, Dave, and I, Dave and I used to be roommates. We lived in celebration, um, back by like that big church they built in the back there. Like that's where we lived. Sure. We used to be regulars at the town tavern. So. Oh yeah. Oh man, I I miss that that place. I, I me and my wife actually we we go into celebration as much as we can whenever we're back up there because man, it's such a cool, unique little town. I should say it town. is. You know, it's kind of silly. Yeah, it <laughs> it, it's the small town feel. Yeah. Like, you know, so. With but with no house under a million dollars. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's so funny when you walk in there. You go from like these small houses that are still like a million dollars, and then you get back to the like McMansions all the way in the back, and that are hidden back there that are crazy. So yeah, exactly. But yeah, so. With uh, with flight scope, um, like you talked about their state of the art, it was radar technology. Um, so this state of the art, art technology, there's a lot of different launch monitors out there. What makes flight scope different from other brands? Sure, and and even kind of touched on it a little bit, um, you know, in, the, in a few questions back, is we're really the first to do it. So we we do say this a lot. We're the pioneers of this technology, bringing it into sports. Uh, but not only that, we don't uh, we, we don't kill you with the price tag or annual fees. And, you know, it's still you know, even when we're a global company. We have offices throughout the world. Uh, you know, when you call it's the normal person that picks up, it's not an automated system where you have to go through a whole bunch of you know, hoops and, and boundaries to, to talk to a real person, which isn't normal anymore. Um, so we you know, we have a great support system and, and great products. Obviously, that helps, too. Um, to where we can, you know, get the technology to every level of golfer, um, you know, without really breaking your pocketbook, which which is not easy to do in electronics. So, oh, that makes sense. Now let's talk. Let, let's go through the line, Daniel, for personal launch monitors from FlightScope, um, and we'll start with the Mevo. Um, it's your smallest and best price monitor. And so, what information if somebody were looking at buying the Mevo? What information do they get on their smartphone or tablet? What information is that going to give them um, so that when they're looking at trying to improve using the FlightScope technology, what information will they get from the Mevo itself? Yeah, sure. So definitely uh, an awesome product. It gives you very basic data, like you said, but still very useful. So, you know, you'll still sit behind you when you're hitting golf shots, like you said, connects to your phone and it gives you, you know, eight data parameters with every single swing. So like carry distance, ball speed, club speed, spin rate. Uh, launch angle, uh, and then you also can take, um, you know, swing video too. You know, everybody's phone or tablet has such good cameras on them now. You can then pair your video and data together. But then, even within our software, there's some little games you can play where you can, you know, hit a shot and see how you know that data compares to like a, a tour player's data. Um, so that way you can try to dial in those clubs. And you know, everybody always wants to, you know, spend money on a. Uh, rangefinder, which is a very useful tool, but not everybody understands how far their golf ball flies. So this is where you can tie those two pieces of technology together. And then, you know, when you're out on the golf course, then, you know, you have that detailed report, just like tour pro does in his yards book, you can open that up and you know exactly which golf club you want for whatever specific shot you're trying to play. So um, definitely is kind of the, you know, just get your feet wet uh, type of technology. Uh, you know, with our product lineup, but it's still very powerful. Um, and honestly, it's, it's, I, I wish I had one, but it's, a, it's actually smaller than my wallet right here. I mean, it's very, very small. So it's very portable. You can throw it in your golf bag. Um, you know, it's not something you have to charge that frequently. So you can, you know, use it from every single day or you know, a few times a week and you're good to go. So that's the, that's the funny thing that I, I started using a launch monitor and everyone uses range finders. Everyone uses like the GPS and on, on the course, but, 
that's great data so you know how far you are from the hole but what a lot of people don't realize is what you think you hit a golf club is not probably what you hit a golf club in distance and it's when when i started using the, uh, these launch monitors it was that was the biggest thing i saw was it let me know exact yardages and i'm hitting better shots making better decisions so that's what I love about launch monitors is that it gives you that data. So now you have that confidence, not only like I'm 150 yards out, I know what my 150 yard club is, not just I've hit a 150 yard shot with this club before. It's now I know that this is the one I hit consistently um, to this yardage. So now I can factor in like wind and different things like that. And it really improved my game um, and brought my yeah. handicap down. Yeah, it's like uh, so you're playing that, a law of averages as opposed to a law of the best shot I hit with that club, you know. Exactly. Like, and that's the great thing about these. So it's absolutely it's fun. But now you have the the Mevo Plus um and it has different parameters that gives you different things. So what are those differences between like the Mevo Plus, the X3? Like you have now three different launch monitors out there. And it's it basically comes down to what, like what I'm looking for and, and cost and things like that, correct? Yeah, exactly. So the Mevo series um, is kind of aimed more at our consumer market. So your standard golfers, um, you know, the, they're so powerful and so accurate that they're, they're actually appealing even, you know, to, to golf instructors and fitters and things like that because they're so portable. Um, so the Mevo is what like we like to call like the gateway drug, right? So like I was talking about, it's very basic, but then once you start using it, you, you can see how addicting it is to kind of dive into the numbers. So that's where we then invented the Mevo plus, which has that plus a little bit more. So it actually invents the ability to then use it as a golf simulator. Um, it has 16 pieces of data and it incorporates a little bit more club data with the initial, uh, Mevo plus package. So you get like angle of attack and um, like spin axis of the ball. So it can tell if the ball is slicing or drawing or hooking. Um, so then, you know, you can then play golf courses with it. It'll capture the putting. Uh, but then there's also even some upgrades with it. Uh, they're they're one-time fee upgrades. We don't, we don't do the subscription thing where you can actually pay to get more data. So with a few upgrades, you can get the pro package and the face impact location. You can actually get all the data that the X3 offers uh, with just a few small upgrades. So you're getting, you know, you're getting every piece of club face angle at impact and you're basically getting like a full MRI for your golf swing every single time you hit the ball. Right. Um, so that's why it's very appealing to uh, golf instructors and things like that, because now the entry price is, is so much lower. Uh, there's no annual fees and you're still getting that reliable, accurate data. Um, on the other side of the market, now we've got people who want to, you know, have that dream man cave and, Sorry, Danny. All this. My oh, sorry, did I get cut out? <laughs> no, yeah, no, you I hit the wrong button. I hit uh, the wrong button. I was trying to turn I my knew, micro. I was, I was trying I to go with the shot. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. So, yeah, I mean, anybody who wants to have a golf simulator in the garage, um, you know, it's multi purpose, right? So then you can also use it at home, but then you can pick it up and take it to the driving range with you when you want to go do your practice sessions. And then, you know, you can connect to a phone, to a tablet, to a computer. It's very versatile. And, you know, it makes it easier to pitch it to your wife that you want to buy one too. So, I don't know if that's a... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. Know our wives are our wives are golfers, so it's not like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I hear that. So, and that's um, and then also then you got the X3 model, right? So, uh, that's kind of like our our Mercedes Benz. So it, it's got automatic self leveling to the terrain. It does full tracking, so it tracks launch to landing up to four hundred and eighty yards. Um, so guys like long drivers, tour players, um, even teaching professionals really like those. Uh, you know, that's basically our professional grade model um, because it just has, you know, more high end parts internally, right? better radar, better camera, things like that, um, which obviously then brings a higher price. Uh, but again, it's it's kind of like if you want the best of the best, then here's what we have to offer. And then we also have our consumer products for, uh, like I said, every level of golfer could now have some form of that technology too, as we're all hoping to do get better at golf, even though that doesn't always happen. <laughs> well, and I think you said it. I mean, I, I like them for like, there's a bunch of different ones in the market and some of them don't have that golf simulator thing. And I see your, the flight scope connects to E6, the true golf um, simulator, which is 
by far, I think one of the best ones that that's out there to have a simulator because it gives that kind of real life, uh, real life feel. So I think that's a, just a great feature that you can add on is that not only you're getting the data, but you're getting it where you can just play around to golf, like you said, in your garage. And that's the funnest part. Yeah, well, and it's even pretty cool. They um, E6 has this new uh, feature called Pin Seeker. Uh, it's actually the it's kind of super managed, but it's the shirt I'm wearing right now. Um, so what <laughs> what they uh, what they do is they, um, they have live closest to the pin competitions for cash, for prizes, for swag. And there's like over 100 of them every single week. And you can compete against other users. And it's not just FlightScope. I mean, there's some of the competitors that also use E6 Connect. They can connect in and then do the same thing. And, I mean, geez, there's guys on there that have won thousands of dollars. Um, so it's like, you know, every once in a while, we got to go test some software and stuff. It's like, you know, we want to play some Pin Seeker and, and see where we stand against, you know, some of the other users in, in the world. Because there's even some tour players that do it just for some side action. So <laughs> Nice. Nice. <laughs> tour players tour players like to do stuff for money never <laughs> um, so you said that there's no subscription service um needed for it just an upfront fee um so without the subscription service or anything like that um is there anything else that's needed to like maximize shots like is there a specialty golf ball or something like that that you guys would suggest or anything like that yeah, I mean, if you're using it um, indoors, for, you know, primarily like in a you know garage setup or a simulator setup, there's you know some special balls Titleist has made that that measure the spin rate a lot easier. Um, otherwise, we have to put a, a small marking on the golf ball with a metal sticker to to be you know 100 accurate all the time. Um, but no, I mean, there's there's no subscriptions, there's no additional fees. You don't, like I said, the only thing you really need is a tablet or a phone or or a computer to run the software. Um, and then, and then you're good to go. So, and, and geez, it's, they're even so sophisticated now you can, oh, there, there you go. He's got the RCTs right there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're so sophisticated to see, I mean, you could connect it to your phone, put your phone in your bag. And every time you take a swing, you could look at your Apple watch and it'll show your data right there on your watch. So it, of nice. course that the feature that's useful for us, because as you probably know, your phones, your tablets overheat pretty quickly in the, in the Florida sun. So it makes that never, uh, <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> I think yeah. a lot of people don't know, Daniel, uh, I, this wasn't in the script. I'm going to go off script here, but um, a lot of people don't know that you are also a little, uh, they, they see you on the flight scope commercials uh, when they come on TV. And I was here <laughs> Brooks there. Um, yep. So uh, Daniel's the model that they use in hitting golf balls in their commercials. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's all, I always get a good chuckle when I see that on TV. So I will say that. So, yeah, I always, uh, I always tell everybody, you know, our first commercial on golf channel had Bryson DeChambeau and Bubba Watson. Our second commercial had me. So, you know, I'm following uh, in some good footsteps there as far as a uh, celebrity nice. status. Um, nice. But yeah. I think this might be my peak. <laughs> might be well, they, you, upgraded, you upgraded the commercial. They, you went yeah. with some good talent, then you went to great talent with you in the second commercial. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's it's you and Sierra Brooks, and I mean that's yeah, you definitely upgraded in talent there. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Funny oh, enough, shit. I was actually there that day they shot that commercial with Bryson. Um, I was out at um at Shingle. You weren't yeah. Shingle, you weren't there that day, but they um was talking with one of the guys at Shingle and Bryson was hitting driver from the back range at Shingle and they didn't close the front range down because they didn't know that Bryson was going to hit driver. <laughs> and Bryson almost killed like three players on the range. He was flying balls over the entire range and into the pond behind the range. So <laughs> That was, that uh, was, was during like, the uh, protein shake binge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he was leaving. He was leaving from there and had to go down. This was the weekend of, it was the weekend before Bay Hill and he was going down. He was leaving from there. It was a Sunday and he was driving down to um, play in the pro member at mm. Seminole and was yep. rubbing that in all of our faces. And we were like, you're a jerk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no. so let me ask you this um, from a use perspective. I know you talked about some other sports. Um, is it the same um is it the same devices that you have for sports like baseball and whatnot, or do you have a different device for baseball like that? Yeah, they're, they're very similar. They look very similar. Um, but like the baseball, softball, uh, track and field, in the field events, obviously, um, they actually are very similar to an X3, but they go up on a tripod. So they're six to seven feet up in the air. Okay. Um, 
so they are different devices uh, for each sport. Um, and then uh, the ones that are like baseball and track and field stuff, super analytical, like the, uh, like the X3 is for golf. Gives you a world of information, um, which, you know, baseball, softball is awesome because they can track stuff for uh, like live data during, uh, during a game. So it can do pitching and hitting simultaneously, mm. which is pretty cool. That is cool. Hey, let me let me ask you this. I know we we didn't we didn't really hint on this. We've talked about hitting the golf ball. Um, I was looking online. The X three does putting too. Is that that's kind of a cool oh, yeah. different feature? Yeah, it's a, something a lot of them don't do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely or don't um, do well. Let's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, it is um, pretty basic in what it captures because there's not a lot of data uh, with putting. You know distance the ball travels how much skid is in the ball because the ball hops off the putter face obviously which can be very useful um but the main thing that i really use it for uh, is the video capture uh, because you can set up your phone tablet you can do like three four videos of, of like your setup and then the the x3 will actually take one down the line kind of like that snake eye view you see on the broadcast on on golf tv or whatever um and that really shows you where impact takes place too so you can tell you know as my you know my putting stroke to open close whatever the video is huge and then it all triggers around what impact takes place so you don't have to do any trimming of the videos and it does it all automatically for you so you know from a practicing standpoint you can just sit there and, and keep practicing and then maybe review it afterwards which makes it really nice nice no that is that is cool that's that's some cool technology that not a lot of the other ones offer so that is that is really nice to have yeah, yeah that's the that's the great thing about these is that like i said it, it's if you really want to improve your game, it's you have to put in the work, you have to put in the effort. But practice makes perfect, but perfect ma practice makes perfect. So if you now know what you hit, where you impact the ball, like all these little things where people ask, like, hey, how do you get from a 15 or a 12 handicap to a 5 handicap? It's doing that, knowing that, knowing what your swing does. And this is like having a lesson, but it's – you put it in your backyard and that's what I do in mine. I put it in the backyard, put up the net and I sit there. I have a stand for my tablet and just you hit and hit and hit and you just read the data and then you go, okay, what did I do there? And where's my impact? Yeah. So, well, and it, it even enhances, about. like if you're a person who gets a lot of instruction, it enhances that even, even more because almost guaranteed your instructor knows a lot about that data you're capturing. Mm -hmm. So in those sessions, you're not with the instructor, then you can kind of show them your notes when you were away from class type of thing. And uh, it can help fill a lot of the gaps because they're not with you every time you practice, you know, we don't have that luxury. So. Yeah. That's the great thing is with, especially with these, you see, you see the pros with the, with the big, like, like what your X3 is, the bigger ones behind there that gives a lot of that data, but none of us as an average golfer want to dr drag something that's that big behind us. Uh, now I want that as my home simulator, let's be honest, but, sure. <laughs> sure. but when, I, when I go to the range right before a round or something, it's, it's nice to take out. Like you said, it's smaller than a lot, put it right behind me and then see that data instantly right before I go into a round, just see what I'm dialed into today. Am I hitting stuff? what I normally hit or am I hitting stuff a little bit less because it does help you just right. to know, right? Well, and it's even, you'll even notice difference like morning, afternoon, mm -hmm evening rounds too just because the the way the uh you know the atmosphere is that you're playing in and how the golf ball heats up and how it flies i mean there we could go down a lot of rabbit holes talking about this type of yeah. stuff and <laughs> luckily some of them i mean we don't we don't even have to worry about as, as amateur golfers but it's it's crazy how, how some of these pros are trying to find any any little inch they can find because that's that's hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars for them so yeah, yeah hey, let the, me ask you let me ask sorry Greg, go ahead no, I was gonna say, and that's the that's the thing is that these like the pros use it to dial in, like they are using it for that, like okay, I hit the ball one seventy to one seventy point five, like they're dialing it in to <laughs> even smaller than that, but like, but for us, for the average for the average golfer, um, you're dialing it in now. Okay, I thought I hit this club one fifty, I actually hit it one forty, and. And I hate it, like you said, this time of day, this, it's, it, it's just that kind of data. It makes the difference and knowing that really, really helps. And that's what these products do. So, yeah. And you can tell the guys on tour who are super analytical. You always hear like once in a while, like you're watching golf on TV and it's like, oh, he, you know, he's doing his interview and he's like, yeah, the golf course sets up really well for me. Well, that probably means like I'm hitting a lot of full iron shots into these targets and I'm not having to hit, you know, 70%, 80%, 90%. I'm just hitting full swings in all the time. 
all of a sudden their dispersion is just so much tighter to the hole, which for those guys, that's, that's basically everything. I mean, the closer they are upon approach from the, from the fairways and, and part threes and stuff is typically your, your top three to five finisher every single week because they're giving themselves the most chances of makeable putts. So it's, it sounds so simple, but, you know, just understanding, like we said, how far that golf ball travels is, is so beneficial because, you know, for the pros, obviously they can repeat things like, like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Whereas us, we feel like we're repeating it, but it's, it's, it's crazy how drastic the differences can be on two similar feeling golf shots for amateurs. Yeah. Nice. Hey, so you guys are doing a pretty good sale right now. You've been advertising heavily on social media, um, your summer sale that you're doing on uh, flightscope.com. Um, is that where if somebody's looking to order a flight scope? Is that the, the place to go or are there other places that they can go and, and find a, and get their Mevo, Mevo plus or X3? Yeah. So, you know, there's tons of outlets you can buy it from. That's, that's kind of my main duty at flight scope actually is managing all of those, uh, those resellers and distributors and stuff across the world. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Um, but yeah, I mean, directly through us, you can sign up for our email club and get even an additional 5% off. So that's kind of the incentive of going straight through us. Um, the beauty is, you know, just like you buy a, you know, a driver at PGA Tour Superstore, you still, if you do decide to go elsewhere and get some other things with it, you still get the same warranties. It's still just like buying directly from us. So, um, you know, even if you do decide to purchase elsewhere, you know, you, you're still, it's still just like buying directly from us. So the biggest advantage, like I said, is that that additional 5% when you, when you buy straight from our site. Nice. Real nice. Well, Daniel, thank you for joining us tonight. I uh, don't want to keep you too long. Uh, I'm going to try and convince Mike, by the way, that we need to come down and do a WAGC event down at uh, the Key West Golf Club there. Uh, yeah, so I'll keep you posted man. on that. Great golf so that we can come I know he's play. played it. He's played it. But yeah, I feel like we need to come down and do an <laughs> event there uh, just so we can get you involved and have you join us too. So uh, yeah, thank definitely. you again for taking time out of your day and uh, enjoy the keys. Um, head over to Margaritaville and have one for us. And uh, thank you for oh, joining us. Will. Have a good night. Yeah, I appreciate right, it, brother. guys. Really appreciate you having me. Thanks, Daniel. Here's Daniel. Thanks, guys. See you. Oh. No, no, that's the – and that's the thing for most of our uh, fans watching out there. These launch monitors that are out there, there's there's a bunch in the market that, that uh, you can use. Um, Mevo is one of the top ones that, that that's out there. But it's really going to give you that data. It's going to tell you, like, what I'm doing here, what I'm doing, how far I hit it. Like, if you use it just for the basic feature of how far I hit a club, that's going to help you tremendously on yes. the golf course. And because, like I said, I've had I've had friends ask me about help with stuff and things like that and what you use data for. And I'm like, you're not going to get into the spin rate. You're not going to get into the um, launch angle. You're not going to get into any of the – higher end data that you really need what it really is helping you with is hey i hit this club this far on average i and it it is in this range it'll show you like i i don't hit the same spot every time but i'm in a small range so i know within five yards left to right or up and uh five yards long or five yards short that's where i'm going to be so if i'm 75 yards out i'm either going to hit it 70 or 180 and it, that's going to make all the difference in your game, especially in the, in the short game is really where it's going to have a yeah. difference. So, Well, I mean, putting yourself, you know, if you've got to carry one over a bunker and hit one back there and you want to make sure you're on the green, knowing how far that, you know, that bunker lip is and, and making sure you carry that. I mean, that's the difference between what is a par to double bogey and around a round of golf. Oh, 100%. It's, it's, and so, um, you know, I think that that's – there's such a huge difference in – you know, if you travel a lot and you play a lot of golf, it's good to have because as you get to different parts of the country where air is thinner, like if you went to Colorado and the ball travels, you know, out in that out in that mile high air, um, it, it, it's good to be able to start hitting golf balls on the range and pulling it out and figuring out how far the golf ball is going just so that when you get to that shot on the golf course, you know, OK, it's you know, I normally hit my seven iron. 160 yards, let's just say. Uh, but here in Colorado with the thinner air, it's going 185 now. So when you get to that shot that's 185, you know what club to pull and you know you're not going to come up short, you're not going to come up long. Like you've got that right club dialed in because you use that on the range too. So that is a really cool thing to have. Yeah, and it's and like I said, it's something that for our listeners that like want to play golf, want to get better at golf, maybe aren't that, that uh, low handicaps, 
and you're thinking like, oh, that's too much for me. It's not. Use it for the basic feature. Put it in your backyard. Play around a golf when you can't get out. Like go yeah. for a, an hour and just hit some golf balls in your backyard. Buy a net, and it'll just you'll start using more of the data later on. But you're going to see that improvement because you have a better understanding of your yardage of where you hit stuff. Uh, yeah. And it's just they're they're a ton of fun to use. So that's that's where I'm leaving that at. They're just fun. I mean, there's a ton of good technology. A ton of you know when you're at home, it's not just hitting balls into a net, you're getting, you're getting true data at home um, that, you know, you're not spending, you know, we've had, and they have their own launch monitor and things like that, or, or in home studio where you're not spending yeah. that money, but you can still, um, you know, get that same, same experience in your, in your garage for what is a fraction of the price of, of putting in a full studio in your house. Yeah. So, um, you know, that is, that is one of those nice things. Um, Dave, I believe I was watching the screen down below here and he is yeah, he's uh, driving and I'm not putting him in. No, I think he's, he's driving. No, I think he just got home. It looked like he pulled in the garage. So, okay. So hopefully um, he'll be back on here with us. He'll with be back on in a minute. So, um, Hey Brad, if you want, I can pull that video up from sick and I can show you that I was with Bryson, but it's cool. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but no that was um it was good i was like talking to daniel he's a good dude um so it was nice to have him on uh super good yeah guy, that was so. that was really good and I gotta, I gotta call out duff on this duff i am uh ride or die with my teams if my giants are great i'm a giants fan if my giants are a dumpster fire i'm still a giants fan so uh Hey Duff, he's still a Yankees fan after this yeah, season. That's I'm still impressive. a Yankees fan. I got the game on back here. It's not, it's not my teams. I'm ride or die with. So it's that's what I think a true fan is. Is if you're gonna uh, love me at my best, you better love me at my worst. So, uh, we're still up on nothing tonight. Okay, um, but yeah, no. Do you want? Do you want to do? Uh, think we should do smack of the week here. Let's do smack of the week. Let's bring in the let's bring in the smack. All right, of the hold week. on one. So no one second. I got to download it here. We were sitting there talking, and I forgot to bring it into the studio. So well, I mean, this has been uh, it's we've had some. We have David a wine festival running through the woods of Iowa. Um, yeah, yeah, that was yeah <laughs> deliverance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in Iowa. I, 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 or is I it more like this. Fargo, North Dakota? I mean, I don't know which one. Which one to call. Uh, here's a smack. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, go, Rob. That was just for you, Rob, right there. So, all right, smack of the week. I feel like this might have been a college move if we all went to college. <laughs> <laughs> you think was gonna happen <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> like that's almost best case scenario <laughs> right <laughs> uh yeah there was that so like uh, it's like those videos have you seen the guy like the people where they, they use the bay of the um the hitting bays and they close the door and then they, they got to hit it through a gap yeah like You've seen those videos? Have you ever yeah. looked at the bay in those videos? They've tried it like 20 times. And there's like dent holes on the yes. side of the bay. like where... <laughs> Yeah. The one time it worked, they got on video because they did it a thousand times before. Exactly. That. Like they were like, okay, now I got this dial in. Yeah. It's like you're so. swinging a golf club inside. This is why I can't put my, uh, my launch monitor in my garage is because my garage does not have a high ceiling. Well, and yeah, your swings, your swings pretty upright. So yeah, you couldn't, you could. Well, I'm also six five, so even if my swing too, wasn't yeah. upright, it's, it's... <laughs> Duff, really, really, <laughs> really, Duff. Oh, did you, Duff? Just for you. Duff, here's the best part. You were there when I filmed that. <laughs> he was there when you filmed that yes yes he was hey uh duff i do want to comment i saw those new bags that you guys got um you guys had made some shank and duff bags with the shank and duff golf association logo they look pretty, pretty sweet nice. not a lot that's a pretty sweet looking bag i'm kind of jealous of it so um yeah i don't i don't know how long by the way how long does it take dave to go from his garage to the basement to 
get on. Right. Well, no, he's. I guarantee he has to go back to the winery. He has to put some of the wine away. So he's got to go there first before. Uh, no, he said he was going right home afterwards. So yeah, he's, he's I, I said know. that. But then he then he realized that if he doesn't go now, it, he might not get there first thing in the morning. Then wine is just sitting yeah. in his car. So, all right, with that, yeah. we're moving on. Bro. All right. So, well, we gotta we gotta go right into this because I'm gonna start with there was a comment made by someone, uh, and Steve, you pointed this out to me on social media this week. That Look, I've got the comment. It was made today. It was literally this was all started this morning. Um, made today, and it's it's this is where um, people don't understand the difference between a pro athlete and <laughs> us regular schlubs. And this goes for male and female. Like, right. as much as you might want to badmouth the WNBA, none of us could take them on one on one. No, not even the big baller brand. Wow. Undefeated, never you lost. Just, you just went mellow. <laughs> you just uh, well, you just went the ball. I went mellow's father. I went. I went. Yeah. I went the. Uh... So I'm going to read the comment that ended up on Twitter today, um, and. It, I'm just going to read it and then we'll deep dive into it and then we'll get to where we've gotten to now. Um, and it says, I'm a three handicapper that plays from 6,900 yards. And I hit my driver 290. I would make every cut on the LPGA tour and be a top 20 player. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Just saying it. I'm just eh, wrong. <laughs> no, you would not be a top 20 player. Like no. zero chance. All, I'm and, a, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out on this limb. If you made one cut, you had a hell of a week and, and a hell of a year. One cut. Like, I'm gonna put that out there. You had two hell of a rounds because I don't. Th- if you made the cut, you had two good rounds that made you that cut. Correct. Back. back. Like correct. I'm sorry. Should so, we? I, by the way, should we? I, you know what? Just because I know someone that's watching wants to comment. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to put this in. Well, I don't know what he's doing over here. There's a whole big like we've got Let's just wait until parts. He's settled and yeah, until he's set. Maybe gives us a we can up see what da- Dave is in our waiting room right now and we can see him. But he's giving <laughs> is us that the thumbs up? <laughs> is that the thumbs um, up? Are you ready to go? I I don't know what that was. He's giving us the a lot state of bird of Iowa. Room. That's the yeah. Iowa state bird that he's showing us right now. We saw that. I, never mind. I was going to say something about a football game of pictures that came out this past weekend, but I decided not to. Hey, I will uh, say that if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, brilliant move. I don't support them, but that was a brilliant move. <laughs> Dave, are you go ready to go? You're loved. Go where you're okay. loved. Okay. All right. Dave's firing. Hey. Hey. I, have some, I have some really bad. I have some really bad light tonight. My uh, my other device is being used by the wife. Uh, oh. By the boss, the boss. By the took boss. It. Yeah, when the boss wants something, you got to give that up. So. Yeah, she's working. But for so her Dave, boss. Dave, we're talking about uh, a guy who's a three handicapper who said he would be a top twenty player on the. He plays for, and I love how he called out that he plays from sixty nine hundred yards. I would like to point out that that is not even the tips at some yeah. of the toughest courses in the country. Yeah, it Correct. would it would never it would never happen. Steve and I talked about this earlier today. It would never happen. Well, oh, well Greg and I Greg and I have got receipts. We've, we've done all. Oh, we've done the research. <laughs> we've done the research. We so, did our, we are show your work. I'm showing your work. I'm on the off, two pages right yeah, now. I'm going to read off some stats here. So now uh, before you read off stats. Okay, he said that he would be a top 20 player on the LPGA Tour. I just want to go down the list right now of players currently outside the top 20 on the LPGA Tour. Just so that we're all clear, who's outside the top 20? Yep. Okay. Lexi Lexi Thompson. Great golfer. Jennifer Cupchow. Another great golfer. Rose Zhang. Yep. Good golfer. Danielle Kang. Knows how to play the game. Cheyenne Knight. Anna Nordquist, Gabby Lopez, Gabby Lopez, and Jessica Corda. Yeah. I'd say those (laughs) women know how to play golf. And I'm going to say that a three handicap is not better than them. (laughs) So let me put this into perspective for you. Let me give you some numbers here. 
on the PGA Tour, the average, average. This is PGA Tour. The at the scoring average is seventy one, one stroke below par on an average golf course. Correct. The best scoring average on the PGA Tour, sixty eight point six two nine. What player that, is that? Uh, that's Mister Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler. Okay, cool. Um, on on the LPGA side. So if we're going to the other side, because we're 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 pulling our receipts here. On the other side, um, LPGA, the scoring average for the best uh, for Kim is 69.83. That's only a difference of 1.2 strokes. Right. Top two golfers on the top two tours. Correct. All right. So 20th on on the PGA tour. Now let's go. Can I? You've got one. I'm going to go with one. Driving accuracy. This is my favorite stat. This, oh, I was going to get to that. I, I want to. Let me. We'll go to that. We'll go to that after this. That's, that's a, okay. <laughs> so, because we're going to go to Gers and Furs on this as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you have that written down because we talked about that earlier and I didn't write that yep. down. Oh, I did. Um, so, tw- so he said he'd be top twenty. Top twenty on the LPGA. Their average, the twentieth. Plays player on the LPGA average shoots 70.850. Two strokes under par on average. If you are a three handicap, and this isn't even that correct, in your best eight rounds out of 20, you shoot three over par. That is a five stroke difference, my friends. On average, right. and that's not even on average. This is their average score. Their handicap would be a plus four or better. Right. So now you're saying it's a five point spread. So if you are a three handicap, just let me get that into perspective. Your average, um, your average score. You're not getting anywhere near 166 on the LPGA tour is probably the closest you're going to get to 75.455. Yeah. Now I I know I'm late to the conversation here, but does this guy, did he even know how to figure out his handicap? Because we've all talked about this before that most people don't even know how to figure out their handicap. Well, here's here's even a better question though. Like, are you a three handicap? And I'll say it on a course that we've all played. Are you a three handicap on the Dyer of the Nicholas at Colleton River? Or are you a three handicap at Champions Gate Country Club where your handicap doesn't travel at all? Yeah. And, and there's a huge difference. And again, we're not talking about, and we're still talking about, and don't get me wrong, the Dye and the Nick are always in exceptional condition when we play mm-hmm. them, right? Like they're not in bad shape. They close the courses down for maintenance, so you don't see them in bad condition. We're talking tour conditions now that you've got to play. Yep. Like this is the guy when they say we want to see the average guy play every week to see what they would do compared to the tour players. This guy would get smoked. And this guy's not even the average guy. This guy, so right. to put it into perspective, he is in the top six percent of the three handicapper. You are in the top six percent of of average golfers in the of non professional golfers in the country. Correct. That's that's a hell of a, an accomplishment. I mean, yeah. I'm a five handicap, and yep. that's like you're in the upper echelon of golfers. So at your local club, at your you're probably winning events. You're probably winning the club championship. You're probably doing things like that. But it's a different ball game on the pro tour, and I don't care right. what pro tour you're on. If whether that's the Corn Ferry Tour, whether that's the Champions Tour, like. You're yeah. getting smoked. Like, um, let's go to that driving accuracy. And earlier this year, yeah. when I was at Nona, uh, Lizette Salas was in our group on Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday. Lizette Salas was in our group on Saturday, and I joked with her. She missed the first fairway. We started on ten. She missed the first fairway on a ball that hit in the middle of the fairway and hit a sprinkler head and kicked into the into the first cut of the rough. It was the only fairway she missed the whole day. And I joked with her, and I was like, "Do you ever miss a fairway?" We're walking up the ninth hole, which is our finishing hole. And she laughed and she goes, 
not too many of them. I hit it pretty straight. I was like, right. Like you hit it real straight, like every time. And so um, currently Ms. Zalas is number one on the LPGA tour in driving accuracy. And she hits 88.9% of fairways. That's ridiculous. Okay. I want you to put this in perspective. The leader on the PGA tour is Russell Henley in driving accuracy. His stats would put him 69th on the LPGA Tour. So, he's the number one driver on the PGA Tour. Number one. In accuracy. He would be 69th this year in accuracy on the on the LPGA Tour. Now, that means, by the way, that if this guy is as good of a driver as a three handicap as Russell Henley is, Right? And he's hitting 71% of the fairways. That means he's stuck in rough, thicker than he's used to at his club that he plays at, that they play in the LPGA Tour. Yep. Now you're gouging. Now you're hitting it in bunkers. And you're hitting it all over the place. And you're hitting it sideways. By the way, just in case you wanted to know, Russell Henley is 20th in the world on the men's game. Yeah. 20th. Yeah. Yeah. In the world. So there's that number 20 again coming out. Um, he's also 19th in scoring average this year on the PGA Tour. As the most accurate driver of the golf ball, he's 19th in scoring average. As John Daly said, chipping and putting wins you tournaments. And, you know, John Daly gets a lot of credit for how far he hits the golf ball. Yep. That dude may have the greatest short game of anybody that hits yep. it that I mean that dude's short game was incredible and there's nothing there's a lot to be said for his short game. Oh 100 percent um, but that's and to put this into perspective like if I hit 50 percent of the fairways in a round that is a phenomenal round. Correct. Like as a five handicap here I'm happy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit the 50 percentile of a fairway you're, yeah. <laughs> if 50% um, of your shots land in the fairway before you get to the green, you're happy. <laughs> fair, it's like at Pinehurst where they say greens visited. We can talk about fairways visited with Dave. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, um, But here's the thing that we're not even talking about. We're talking about hitting it, putting it, and all this other stuff and chipping it. There's a huge difference in... One, the mental game that goes on at that level and how they play, which is the difference between a three handicap and, and a better player. But two, if you think you can compete at that level, it's a lot easier, and I'm going to put it in this group perspective, it's a lot easier for Dave to pick up two strokes around, right, off of his handicap because his handicap's higher than ours than it is for Greg and I to pick up two strokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... It and the other thing you're a three you know, handicap and you're trying to pick up what is five strokes five to seven yeah, i yeah. mean that's what you're trying to pick up i'm okay, being good talk. Glad we have five. i mean my and first question is how many rounds have you shot under par in your life as a three handicap and, and i guarantee it's more than the average golfer but here's the thing right. if you wanted to have any clout in what you're saying you should be a scratch golfer you should be a zero right. or better like, don't come in here and say I'm a three handicap and I could be 20th on the LPGA tour. You, yeah. I don't care how far you hit it. You know, Maurice Allen, who is the only person I know to hit a ball across Niagara Falls, couldn't be 20th on the LPGA tour in the top 20. And you can ask him that and he would tell you that. And that's, the, that's the thing is it, this is such a sexist thing to say that you're like, you're watching a game like the LPGA golfers are great at the game of golf. They might right. play different yardages on a course, but here's the thing. I can play from 6,900 yards, and I can play from 5,900 5, yards. Yep. And I can shoot the exact same thing. Yep. It's not going to change. It's just I'm going to hit different clubs on my approach. And I now, might hit, I'm going to hit a lot more drivers. <laughs> the reason that this came to light today, by the way, wasn't because he just – it was posted on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it today. Um, it's the response that it got from a top 20 LPGA player in Charlie Hall, um, who finished second at Pebble Beach this year. She finished second in another major. Um, she said 
shall we sort this game out? I'll let him play off the red tees while I play off the whites. <laughs> okay, so we have the match set for December, right? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Like, like 100%, that's what I want to watch. <laughs> right. Like, I, I, you know, I'm sorry, but I want tour conditions and I want, yeah, firm and fast fairways, firm and fast greens, and let's go. Let's see what this guy can do. Because, oh, uh, by the way, yeah. Peter Finch, Peter Finch offered to televise it and do commentary for it. And he has to walk. No riding in a cart like he's probably yep. used to. Right. You gotta walk. You can have a caddy. I'll give you a caddy. Give me a caddy. Yep. Like, so here's the thing. I would love to see this. I would. I don't. And here's the thing. I maybe don't want to see him because I don't want him to get the notoriety notoriety against this. Right. Yes. But I want to take right. uh, an average golfer, like a uh, not an average. Golfer, I want to take a great golfer, a great club pro or something or club uh, hack, like, and take them out against a PGA and a and an LPGA player in. Like U.S. Open conditions, because if you're going to be in the top 20, you better show up at a major. Let's be honest. You have to. So at least one of them. Yeah. And let's see what you do. I have played. So the LPGA had an event in Indy at the Brickyard course. I played the day after. So it was set up. This is a drink. Hey, Brad. <laughs> I played the day after that course. I was literally there on Sunday watching Lexi Thompson play. And um, and I was there the day after. While I was on the course, I literally booked it for the next day just because I wanted to play it in that condition. It is a total different from your average day on the golf course. That rough is what you see in the U.S. Open. They drop a golf ball and it disappears. So you're hitting through that. If you have never hit out of something like that, like the only reason Bryson won his U.S. Open is because he muscled through that crap. He yeah. was stronger than everybody else. I, I'm like, gonna I'm gonna put this comment up because I texted I, I texted this person today, um, and Brad said put this guy up against Pfeiffer first. And I texted Chad was one of our guests a few weeks ago um, with Chad and Adam were on. Uh, Chad finished third this past year at the Hilton Grand Vacations Tournament Champions in the Celebrity Division, behind um, Annika and Jeremy Roan. Uh, if I can remember correctly, I think it was Ronick would finish second. Um, Chad's comment back to me because I sent this to him because I asked him what his handicap was. And he said, ha, th- that guy's an idiot. I'm a 0.5 right now. But even when my handicap down to a plus three, I wouldn't even bet that. So here's <laughs> there's a good point. Right. You lo- <laughs> he lost. So Pfeiffer lost. Came in third. LPG- to an LPGA um retired lpga player oh uh, it was d-lo i he was never mind uh, there are so many stories about d-lo never mind um, <laughs> but but that's you he came in third as that to a one of the greatest lpga players of all time and the greatest closer and one of the greatest closers in red sox history I'm just gonna say that so, yeah <laughs> so like <laughs> i get you Jonathan Applebaum was there <laughs> no, one five was there though. Um, and D'Lo and um, the Flying Hawaiian was also there. Yeah. There's like only there's there. only one closer in Major League Baseball, and he's the second greatest player to wear 42. That's also true. Yes, there you go. As a Red Sox fan, I'll even say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> that just proves it right there. Like, I get it, you're a three handicapper, that's yep. fine. Like, you're a great golfer, and and you know what? On on a good day, you and I could have a great match, and you're probably going to beat me most of the time. Yep. But you're not going to beat uh, – if you played an LPGA pro probably uh, 100 times, I'd say you have a, the best case scenario is you won two of them. And that's if <laughs> they started with a two-stroke penalty because they were late to the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have to play half of their shots with their opposite, you know, swing? Oh, are we playing ambidextrous golf here? They played the they played the uh, back nine blindfolded. Yeah. Right, like, come on, like I'm sorry, the t- tour players shoot 67 in their sleep when they're not playing in a tournament. Like yeah. that's what they do. Like good luck. That's uh, what are they going to shoot today? 67. That's the, again, that's what it is. Pro athletes are on a different level. Correct. I have. 
we I've played golf with prof- with uh, professional golfers and uh, that are past their prime and still beat any average golfer. Yes. I have I've played basketball with professional athletes and yep. with WNBA players that in heels still can shoot better than anybody uh, in gym shoes um, on a basketball court. It's you just don't understand. Sometimes you think that oh. I play golf great. I'm the best at my at my club on a, on a good day that is not in pro conditions. I can take on anybody. It's a great mentality, but it ain't true. Yeah. No. No, not true at all. So, um all right, so there's last call. I know we we're, we're kind of jumped around tonight because Dave was out on a wine walk, um but we need to get to odds for the Fortnite championship. And then uh, also Ryder Cup odds. Let's do odds, and then we will call it a night. Uh, I guess I better bring those up. Okay. <laughs> you had one job, Dave. You had Dave, one job. One job tonight. I mean. <laughs> you didn't lock the raptor cage. <laughs> you are Phil Tippett. Yes, that was a Phil Tippett reference. Phil Tippett also, by the way, was um, in Star Wars. He worked for yes. Lucasfilms as well. So, um, but this is... We're getting back into the swing. Didn't have an event last week. Just an like event this uh, just week, a like couple our, weeks our off, show. and then the Ryder Cup. We, we didn't want to compete with the NFL, so we moved to yeah. Tuesdays. The, the PGA didn't want to compete with the NFL's opening season, opening week, so... Yeah. So it's not it's not a it's not a bad who's who for the first tournament. Um no, it's not. So um surprise so out of the gate is gonna be Max Homa at seven to one. Shocking. Uh Shocking. Th- uh Thagala at sixteen to one. Hmm. And because he probably needs some rider cup practice, JT. At sixteen to one, he needs to just get into the top fifty. Is what he's trying to do. Yeah, um, Stefan Yager, Cam Davis, and Bo Hosler rounded out at. Uh, it's Stephen. It's Stephen Jager, but yeah, okay. Stephen Jager, but yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> details, details. <laughs> had a little bit of wine tonight. <laughs> I like Stefan Yager though. I'm sure he did too. Is he related to uh, to uh, the other Yager? <laughs> the Yarmir Yager. Yeah. The Yarmir. Yeah. So that that's what we got right now coming into coming into that one. So I haven't looked at the the course setup for that one yet. So uh, I don't have a good idea. They redid coming. the course. That they, they re. Um... I was reading today about it, and they re uh, they re numbered some of the holes and rerouted some of the holes out there uh, to make the finish a little better. They moved a par three to the seventeenth hole, which was eleven because it's their signature hole, wanting to make that a little more exciting. Um, so they holes one through seven are the same, I think, and then um, eighteen remains the same. But then everything else was kind of rerouted in the middle of the golf course uh, from a routing standpoint to to make the golf course a little better for. TV and whatnot. So that's it's a little different routing that, than you normally play. I think that's interesting because I feel we've seen that a lot on tour this year with different courses, like where they added they added a hole. Like what was it? Was it the uh the, the open championship? No, the, the open, open championship. championship. They used that par three from the par three course. Exactly. Yeah. Like you're using I like that they kind of have changed kind of stuff up in that yeah. sense, but I almost think sometimes like and we've done this where we play a golf course, you're like yeah, those nine should be reversed. Yes. Like that that feels like I should finish on what was nine and start on what was ten. yes. Like when they did that to LBV. Yeah, they've done that there. They've did it at um a bunch of yep. different courses in Orlando where they change them around yep. and they find like you just see like that should have been the finishing hole. Like what hole what course did they do that on recently that didn't make a lot of sense? Um I played one. It didn't make sense. They they flip flopped the nines, and I didn't like it. And I was like, "This is an awful finish." Now, uh, well, wasn't it when we played at uh, Hilton Head Lakes? Wasn't that one they said they that was flipped? And we and we thought that was odd the way that finished. No, um, Highlands Reserve flipped oh, up the nines, oh. so you finish with the back to back par fives now. 
Oh, I don't like that. No. And that first hole, it, well, and what was the tenth hole was that hole that went out and then went down and had that big waste bunker on the left hand side. They yeah. filled in that waste bunker. It's all St. Augustine grass now, and literally, you just bomb it down there and just whatever. Now it doesn't matter. You can just do whatever that, you want to. Well, that's the my the course where my high school played, and it was right next to my high school. Um, well, the one thing I hated about that course, I, I thought it was a great course overall, but the one thing I hated was your first two holes, par five. Your last Awful. two holes, par five. Awful. Yeah. Those are the only par fives you see, and it's the first two and the last two. There's like, only one golf course that I know in the world that's good that has back-to-back finishing par fives, and that's Wentworth. But here's the thing. I, I always thought about, oh, what if you reversed it? If you reversed it, you had four par four, fives in a row. Like, yeah. imagine if they... <laughs> yeah. What an awful idea that would be. You would have not eight, nine, ten, and 11 would um, all be par fives. Par fives. Yeah, no, let's not do that ever. No. So sometimes it's a good idea. Sometimes it's a terrible idea. Hey, Dave, have they updated the Ryder Cup odds? Uh, not yet. Um, Europe's getting a, a, about a point and a quarter, and it's 12 to 1 to tie right now. Uh, but some interesting new props have come out on the top USA and top European point score. Ooh, um, Scotty Scheffler's got to be up there for the USA. Scheffler's getting four and a half, and Cantley's, get, Cantley's getting six. Those are your okay. odds on favorites on the USA side. And then Rom and McElroy are each getting four and a half. Um, see that. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there and say that Justin Thomas is the number one point getter. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, there's the <laughs> one. I was going to ask you, where is he on the, on the point yeah. getter? He's, because I could, he, he's 10 to one right now is the number one okay. point getter. What, what's speed? Nine. Or I was going to say probably about one as well too. Okay. Speed yep. One. I what about Ricky? That. Top, it, top USA captain's picks. Um, Justin's getting four and a half as the Sounds top right. number of okay. captain picks. Hey, Versus I don't know. Uh, I, I know this is kind of off topic. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, did you see what just became legal in Florida? There's a sports. lot of jokes that can be made there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is sports betting. I was like, this is a, we want to make this a family show. I don't really want to go as far as yeah, sports betting. Yeah. That's the yeah. sports betting is the new thing. I mean, it's it's becoming at, like the NBA arenas, the NFL arenas are even putting it in the arenas now, like in the yeah. stadiums yeah. and baseball stadiums. Like you can go to certain arenas now or stadiums and there is sport betting like Everywhere. areas in there. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. that's that has taken over because I mean, it's. It's it's a money maker yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Good show, Dave. Thank you for joining us late tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you really couldn't let that slide. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, hope everybody has hope everybody has a good week. Um, got some golf on this weekend to watch. Uh, more football, and um, you know another exciting week. So look forward to it. Let's hope we don't have another idiot post stupid stuff on social media. Oh, that's going to happen, but. No, let's dumb. have it because it's it's yeah. great content to talk about. Like, <laughs> right. If you if you're so. gonna make a, a comment, then back it up. So oh, I gotta right. go. I, I gotta go show up at Southern Dunes this weekend and win a golf tournament. There's that too. So yeah. Um, all right, everybody, have a good week, and we will uh, catch you next week. All right. Cheers, cheers. y'all. Cheers, everybody.